Okay. Hello, my friends. <laughs> I've had a bit of block this week. Um, yeah, I think it's just been getting space arranged to fully commit to this. And I think I need a project, a project because projects help with like, like a cue or a um, prompt. Definitely prompts are helpful um, to kind of focus your attention around an idea. And I think the idea that I'm playing with right now, um, but in my mind, and so now I think I need to bring that out into my work, is um, around balancing our duality inside of us and yes yeah, that sounds like ooh, new age but um I think it's very clear to me that we have masculine and feminine traits inside of us and I at least in the where the way where I was raised predominantly in America um the idea of masculine and feminine is very divided and I I think that's true around the world. Um, so it makes us feel very like split inside of ourselves because we do have masculine and feminine inside of all of us. Um, and I think each of us has our own unique balancing point between the masculine and feminine. Um, and I think when we can find our own inner balance there, it makes us able to be balanced with each other as human beings more because each of us being in balance helps balance the whole. We're like a bunch of little floating buoys. Anyway, hi y'all. This is Sonia here with the Tech Margin. The Tech Margin is a consultancy that focuses on bleeding edge tech, AI, Web3, and um, also dev relations, developer evangelism. Um, those are kind of the things in my wheelhouse. And uh, this channel is really about my exploration of my own content creation journey. So perhaps you will be inspired to follow a career in tech yourself and understand that you can also be creative while doing it. I totally busted my head on my camera about two minutes ago, which is why I have that big red boo-boo on my head. Um, so, and then I realized I need to film an introduction segment. So hello, thank you for joining the video today. Please hit subscribe if you like it, um, share with your friends. I'm gonna be making one of these at least every weekish. I'm trying not to be like brutal with my time frame while I get up and running here, but um, I do wanna be consistent also, so. Let me know what you think and enjoy the show. I think that's pretty good. All right, so um, yeah, I'm getting ready to do content. Obviously that's kind of the whole deal here. Um, recording myself doing stuff. It's a weird thing. Um, but I also have a friend who recommended that I be more vulnerable. Um, it's an interesting word vulnerability. Um, I think especially as a female, because um, because I think it's not something that we are really like told is valuable in our world. Um, we're kind of like vulnerability, the, the word in the English language um, is definitely seen as a bad thing overall um, in, in, the, in the typical sense. Um, I think it's only Brene Brown and um, she really opened my eyes a couple of years ago when I read uh, Darren Greatly and some people who I'm very close to also had the same experience um, where she talked about shame and vulnerability and how leaning into these things actually is power, um, but not in the typical sense of like the, the typical idea of vulnerability, like random crying at commercials or like, you know, crying when somebody upsets you at work. That's not vulnerability. That's inappropriate showing of emotions for this situation. Um, especially if it's like 
not that you have something else going on in your life and you're just like crying because somebody upset you in a meeting. Like that's not okay. Just like it's not okay to scream in a meeting or any other kind of like extreme emotional display like that. It's dysfunctional and it's unhealthy for the people you work with. That's not where vulnerability is. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, man, the shit that we inherit through our lives. Right? <laughs> like I, um, you know, I, grew up with a lot of fighting in my house when I was a kid and I moved around a lot and there was a period of time when I was real little where we didn't have a home that was stable at all like in fact technically we were homeless it wasn't for the friends in our life that we um had a place to stay my mom and I and um you know uh my family like everybody's family has stuff so that's part of it. We, we, we get stuff from like our childhood and we, you know, it's like a little snowball effect, but you know, in order to survive in this world, we, we kind of figure out coping strategies and then we get to a point in our lives. I'm not going to use the term midlife because I fucking hate that term. Excuse me, children. I'm going to bleep that out <laughs> if any kids are watching. Yay. Thank you for watching my channel. But I really hate the term midlife. So I'm going to call it prime. I have replaced that word in our household with prime. And I'd say, why not? Like you're working through your youth, you know, learning the stuff you need to learn in order to be a successful adult. You get to adulthood and then you're telling me that by the classical idea of our society's life line when you get there now you're in midlife now like you're at the top of the hill that's terrible what kind of message are we teaching our children no prime can be whenever you decide it is for as long as you want it to be i'm gonna go with that i think we can all get on board with that because you know what once you hit 30 you're not gonna want to be called middle-aged you're not gonna want to be called middle-aged when you're 40 either you're gonna feel like this is the prime like this is what i've been working towards Okay, so you get to prime and you realize, oh, you know, some of the stuff that I've inherited, uh, you know, as I've been living my life actually is not really serving me anymore. Um, I can tell you what it was for me that really tipped me off um, without um, going into too much depth here because that's a whole other side story. But basically, I started getting really annoyed at myself for the way that I act when men are loud and aggressive in a professional or any time, like who wants to be around that? But like certainly in a situation where you're not expecting it, like professional situations, right? You don't expect somebody to be loud and aggressive at you. But I realized for me, it's beyond just that that's not appropriate. It's actually, it was like triggering me because I grew up with a lot of loud aggressiveness around me. And uh, as a child, I developed a lot of coping strategies for that, such as wanting to retreat, which is natural when somebody larger and louder and scarier than you <laughs> is yelling in your direction. So, you know, but as an adult, you're in your professional life, right? You're doing your thing, you're succeeding, you're a leader in your field. And then suddenly somebody comes at you with that emotional instability that that is definitely their problem. But how I handled it was not okay with me because I could see how that was getting in the way of me having a more productive response, which would actually serve to potentially educate that person that that's not okay. It would also help me stand my ground in a situation where the other person in, in one case was very wrong. It was an incorrect move that they made um, by all you know accounts. And of course, in a room full of your peers who respect you, you know, you'd like to be able to be in command of your response and not to just like wilt like a little flower. So um, I think what I understand is many people experience something like that. They get to prime, whatever that is for them, and they realize that there's something kind of in the way of their like reaching maximum potential. And it could be in their career, it could be in their relationships, but um, then they start to do a little bit of introspection or they do a little research and they start to realize, oh, this is a really common scenario. People 
inherit stuff from childhood, coping mechanisms and strategies. That's like your armor that you build up over your lifetime. And you can choose to put some of it down if it no longer serves you or to transform it. Let's call it, we'll take it to the smelting scrapyard and we'll smelt that armor down into some new shiny armor that's gonna really just be what we need. Maybe it's not armor anymore. Maybe it's like arrows for our quiver, as my friend Eric says. Um, so for me, uh, Right around that time, I was also making a job change, a really important one. I had um, gotten hired at a company I wanted to work for for a really long time, and I really didn't want to, um, you know, like I just wanted to be my optimal self entering that new dynamic. Um, so I started doing some self-work. I read a lot of books. Um, I started reading some books that I couldn't actually finish because they were so triggering. Um, one of them is The Body Keeps the Score. It's a fantastic book, but it was written before trigger warnings were a thing. And I spent a very interesting summer day listening to that audiobook, getting massively triggered before I realized probably around what my trauma was. <laughs> um, so that was intense. And then, you know, I kind of like, I, I guess this is a pretty common scenario with that book, actually, because it is so triggering. Um, people kind of read to where they get triggered and then maybe often will either just be done or they'll go do some research around that. So that's what I did. I did some research around that, found other books um, like, uh, uh, Nicole LaPera's um, How to Do the Work I'm re reading right now that's really good. I mean, again, they just it's just all of this information that just reaffirms that the answer is in here and the answer does have to bring about some uncomfortable feelings. Like, you know, I, I the way I've been saying it lately is when we took on this reaction, it came into us. <laughs> to let go of this reaction, it must go out of us. In both exiting and entering, there is a feeling of, of emotion. And sometimes it's kind of gnarly bringing up old stuff, but I think it's absolutely worth it. It's absolutely essential. It's growth. I'm a big believer in the idea that there is no transformation without growth and there's no growth without discomfort. Discomfort is what happens when you're pulling apart things and putting them back together again. As an engineer, I'm pretty happy in that state when I know the end goal, when it's in ourselves, that is not as neat and tidy of a process. And I definitely have some reservations around like fully being vulnerable. So I'm being vulnerable right now. I hope <laughs> that comes across. Um, you know, I don't know how much of my content I want to be around that and around what I'm working on, but it's hard to inextricably, oh wait, no, they're inextricably linked. It's hard to, inextricable. Is there an extricable? I don't know. Anyway, it's hard to parse them out. And I hope it is also helpful for some of y'all out there who are maybe, um, you know, younger than me, older than me, right at my age, doesn't matter what age that you are. It's really just when you decide, I got stuff I need to work on, maybe I'll do a little introspection. Um, I've been really lucky to have wonderful people around me in my life to be supportive in this way who aren't judgmental, because that's key also. Um, the last thing you need when you're pulling apart your onion layers is to have a bunch of judgment around you. So be real careful about who you share that with and, you know, understand that not everybody's going to get it. And that's OK. A big part of it is being OK <laughs> with the fact that not everybody's going to get it, you know, or understand or appreciate it. And that's OK, too. I mean, you might need to distance yourself from people who are naysayers because that's not going to be helpful. This is Betty, my base. It is a 1991 Tiesco, I think is how you say it, Japanese base for little shorties like me. I love it to bits. I got it on reverb. It's the jam. I'm learning how to play it. I want to be like Flea. And um, I'm definitely going to be working towards putting a multimedia piece together for y'all. So that's exciting. And I think I am done for this moment. 